Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of Money Talks, but can you keep up? In this segment, we're gonna be talking about fundraising strategies. So last week we talked about um, budget and nonprofit um, budgeting for nonprofits and social enterprises. This week, like I said, we're gonna be talking about fundraising strategies. So we're gonna cover you're going to examine various fundraising strategies such as individual donations, corporate sponsorship, grant writing. We just had a whole conversation about this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and fundraising events. We are also going to discuss how to identify and approach potential donors and how to develop effective fundraising campaigns that align with your organization's goals values and of course your mission right so if this is your first time catching us my name is tracy v allen i am the owner of <clears throat> impact management group where i help social impact businesses to design build and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities while impacting their communities i like that <laughs> I'm with Pi Blue and I'm owner of Pi Blue Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. Right? <laughs> yeah. I can tell you what to do, but if you do what I say, okay. <laughs> I say that all the time. I know you're grown. I can't tell you what to do, but if you listen, you might but get you listen, right? if you listen, we can get you together, right? And, and fundraising, <laughs> fundraising is, you know, there's the fundraising starts with if you in so it can be fun right it can mm -hmm. be fun if you know what how to do this and i you know i tell people all the time that uh breaking even is not fundraising you know um and we just talked about budget last week right yeah. um understanding what that raising goals look like um how much you're wanting to profit um, from fundraising, how much your expenses are and being able to cover those expenses first, and then, you know, and then um, think about what your profit might be. But, you know, a lot of times what I run into, Tracy, is that folk are, you know, wanting to, to raise monies and they don't understand why. Yes. They don't understand what it's for. You know, it, it's one thing not to understand your mission, but if I'm going to give you money, I need to know where my money is going and why. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is this an important thing? Not just because you woke up this morning and you decided to have a, a business or an organization, but what does this mean for me? You know, what does your mission mean for me? Um, and that I think that helps with the approach um, to people or for, for corporate corporations or whoever you'd like to sponsor you. But a lot of people just don't know that they're just saying, hey, I need money and they make it about them. And it's not about you. It's about, you know, corporations have corporate responsibility they have their philanthropic goals they already know what they want to support does your mission fit into their philanthropic goal and doing that research up front to know whether or not you're a fit um a lot of people get turned away when they ask for stuff because they're they're just not a good fit and no one tries to figure out am i a fit first or do i just run and ask people for money all the time you know okay. even with you know fatiguing people when you're doing peer-to-peer -peer stuff and you're asking for stuff without a real solid direction you know i'm just randomly asking or i'm asking every day or every week having a strategy behind that although and i know i'm talking about all the bad stuff right like the negative things that, that people do <laughs> like like okay don't do this don't do that but you know well, the negative things are the things that we talk about a lot of times in the consultancy because we have to dispel a lot of myths mm -hmm. right so when you talk about fatiguing um your your potential donors and especially in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So like I teach a, a course called 10K Roadmap and it's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising model where I teach them how to get $10,000. Actually, you can do it in 30 days, but we, we, we stretch it out to 90 days, right? And that is one of the components that I talk about all the time is that you have to be able to clearly articulate why it is that you're doing this fundraiser. Why, how does the, the fundraiser align to your mission and how is the fundraiser going to impact not only the people that you serve, but how are the people that you're asking to support you going, what's the ROI for them, right? Mm -hmm. Why should they want to be aligned with your organization? Because you're in essence asking them to become an ambassador for your organization, right? And that means that you have to have a clear script, basically, that they can learn so that they go out there and represent your organization in the best light because they're going to be soliciting their um, 
network. They're going to be leveraging their network to help you to raise money. So knowing exactly, and that's what Ty said in the beginning, knowing exactly why you're doing this fundraiser, knowing exactly how this fundraiser is going to um, impact your organization and therefore impact the community that you're so you're going, your mission, your cause is going to be essential for, uh, for success of your, um, of your fundraiser. I'm not going to put my money behind something that someone is not sure or clear on as to what they're doing or how they're going to spend your money, because I don't want to give you money for you to go on vacation. <laughs> right. So I need to see proof of concept. I need to see that you're actually doing what your organization says it does. So mm -hmm. I am going to look at your social media platform. I'm going to go look at your website. I'm going to ask you questions, especially if you're asking for any significant amount of money. People really want to know. You ask for hundred dollars and the person is doing pretty well. They're probably like, mm, okay, fine. But when you're going out and you're asking for those sponsorships, right? Or you're asking, you're asking a grantor to give you $25,000, $50,000. They want to know certain things about your organization to make sure that their monies are going to what you say it's going to be doing for. And that's where budgeting comes into place, right? They need to see that budget, that breakdown of how you're going to utilize the funds. Mm -hmm. So the fundraising approach is it definitely has to be goal aligned. It has to be mission aligned and it has to be value aligned. You don't want to go after somebody or an organization that doesn't have the same goals that your organization has. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, having you know, the research up front, I think that's what people miss and they, you know, kind of just randomly do things because they heard that so-and-so donates money or whatever. So I'm going to ask them, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, about what you're doing so they're not gonna give you any money because you're not you're not missing yeah. them on with what they're wanting to do and it's, again, it's not so much about you it's about them and what they want to have accomplished with their money and you have to know what that is mm -hmm. what are you accomplishing how are you solving a problem how are you creating an impact and that goes with everything you know we're you know grants is one way because we, we're talking about different ways you can raise money right so grants would be one of those things i tell people you know all the time when you're when you're talking you know grants and sponsorship are two different ways to bring in money the approach is also different because you're, you're doing different things grants are mostly about um they, they get a little bit more technical right so folk want to know your impact they want to know your outcome they want to know your you have to describe your program you know those kind of things and I'm saying, you know, but people don't have those. Like, I don't got a program. Well, why are you trying to get money? Like, what is the what, what is what is the money for? Right? Um, knowing what you're ready for in the way of grants, so you don't, you don't waste a lot of time applying for stuff that you are not ready for. Um, even though grants are not guaranteed, sometimes we just spend too much time chasing grant money that we're not in position for. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing with the same thing with major sponsors. Um, a lot of us are just not in position for major sponsorship. You got to know where you are so that you yeah. know what to what to to focus on. And to me, a lot of times before you even start looking at those bigger um, awards, you need to make sure that your program and the services that you're offering are solid right? That you have worked out all of the kinks or at least most of the kinks because nothing is ever perfect, right? So you want to make sure that you've worked out most of the kinks and that again, you have that success rate, which is your impact, right? Because it is, what would we like to say? Impact is a new black, impact right? Is yeah, impact is I a new black. Okay, <laughs> and Ty likes Last to say, <laughs> your right. I like to say the pay is in the programs, which is true. Mm -hmm. So making sure that your program and service offerings are tight, right, mm -hmm. is going to be pivotal to your success when it comes to any type of fundraising strategy that you're going to implore in your nonprofit organization or social um, enterprise. Yeah. Anything else that you want to add? That's all I got. Y'all get it together. That's all she's got. That's all I got too. <laughs> of course, if you have any questions, you can always drop them in below and we will definitely reach out to you. Ty has her own um, YouTube channel. Um, you want to tell them about your YouTube channel so they can uh, there too. Capacity Central is my YouTube channel. Y'all can follow me on Capacity Central. Um, we have a B-Work funding series that's happening right mm -hmm. now. 
you want to be a part of that, be worthy, be worthy of funding. It works right into this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have to be worthy of funding. Yes. Yeah. So she has the Be Worthy of Funding series where she's actually interviewing people who have gotten millions of dollars, millions, I'm telling you, millions yeah. of dollars <laughs> in grant and monies and government contracting. Just it just is that was the 27 acres of land, the same person. Oh, she really? Just, yeah, she oh, just said nice. <laughs> So there are people out there doing it. It's absolutely possible, but you got to be able to put in the work and you have to be structured. You have to understand the structure and the, 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 you know, the dedication that goes behind getting it done. It's not easy work, but it pays off in space if you do it correctly. Mm -hmm. All right. Until next time, guys, we we'll stay tuned for part three. We're going to be talking about financial reporting. So until next time, bye.